Welcome to Truth Seekers. Saturn, the Supreme God. In this presentation, we will discuss the planet Saturn. We will focus on the hexagram as it relates to the planet Saturn. Ancient man venerated the stars and planets, attributing them with godly powers. All religions come from an ancient stellar cult. Before man worshipped deities, they worshipped the stars and planets. Man has been worshipping Saturn for thousands of years. Saturn ruled the kingdom of Atlantis and became the divine ancestor of all earthly patriarchs and kings. Neptune, son of Saturn, is sometimes referred to as the god of Saturn. The forefathers of the Greeks were governed by Kronos of the Cronian or Atlantic Sea. Kronos, king of Atlantis, created a golden age of wisdom and peace. The cult of Saturn has been perpetuated through numerous gods during antiquity. Nineveh, the god of agriculture, was the Babylonian name for the god of Saturn. Saturn is the supreme god and ruler of the kings. Saturn, the lord of the rings. The cult of Saturn has never stopped and its rites are still present to this day. Saturn, dubbed the Lord of the Rings, is the reason why we exchange rings at weddings or put halos on the heads of godly people. The halo on the head represents the ring of Saturn. Saturn is Kronos, the god of time. The Greek god Kronos, which derives from the Greek word for horned, the horned god, was a titan born of the union between Uranus the sky and Gaia the earth. The titans ruled over the earth in a golden age. Kronos was the god of agriculture. He was depicted with a sickle, which he used to harvest the crops and kill his father Uranus. The Feast of Saturnalia Ancient Romans held a great feast called Saturnalia during the winter solstice. This event was held to commemorate the Golden Age of Saturn or Kronos and honour the Saturn Temple. It was an event to eat, drink and be merry to exchange gifts. During Saturnalia, roles of master and slave were reversed. Moral restrictions loosened and the rules of etiquette ignored. This was a time of total abandonment and merrymaking. It refreshed the idea of equality, of a time when all men were on the same level Christians adopted the feast of Saturnalia and renamed it Christmas. In Egyptian mythology, Isis is considered Saturn's eldest daughter. I am Isis, queen of this country. I was instructed by Mercury. No one can destroy the laws which I have established. I am the eldest daughter of Saturn, most ancient of gods. In Semitic civilizations, they referred to Saturn as the god El. El, the supreme deity, was represented by a black cube.
Saturn is an inhibiting force. Saturn is associated with man's restrictions, limits, decay and death. Different religions venerate different planets. Judaism worships Saturn. The day of Saturn is Saturday. The color of Saturn is black and that's why the clergy wear black attire. Islam worships Venus. The day of Venus is Friday and their color is green. The planet chosen by Islam is Venus, the planet of love. And the number associated with Venus is the number five. Friday is the fifth day. Along with their holy day on Friday, they also pray five times a day and adhere to the five pillars of Islam. On top of each mosque, you will see a crescent moon and a five pointed star. The top of the mosque roof represents the sun whereas the crescent moon and five-pointed star symbolize the moon and Venus. Christianity worships the sun. It is a solar cult. The sun day is Sunday and their color is light. I am the light of the world. The Hexagon of Saturn On the North Pole of Saturn, there is a persisting hexagonal cloud pattern. It is an eternal storm that is in the shape of a hexagon. This hexagon is very big. 
Each side is 14,500 kilometers. Here is the Earth in scale to this hexagon on the North Pole of Saturn. The hexagon divides into six triangles. The hexagon also represents the cube. The hexagon is a 2D representation of the 3D cube. There is a black cube that is associated with the planet Saturn. The black cube is linked to Saturn. The square of Saturn. A square is a 2D cube. A square is a 2D representation of the 3D cube. The square symbology is everywhere in logos and found everywhere in marketing and advertisement. Here is the X box in a square. The square represents the cube. A box is a cube. The X in the square. If we draw two lines through the square, we get a cross. It is the X in the square. The pyramid shape on the top of the obelisk forms a cross when viewed from above. The obelisk is a phallus symbol and therefore the cross on the top is a masculine symbol. The cross is a powerful eclectic and universal symbol of solar worship. The X is a masculine symbol, just like the square. The square is a masculine symbol. Now let's look at the ring of Saturn. So Saturn has a cube, a square, but Saturn also has a circle. The ring is a circle. The circle of Saturn is a feminine symbol. So Saturn has both masculine and feminine energy. Saturn represents the masculine, the square. Saturn represents the feminine, the circle. When the two come together, it is the union of the male and the female. The cross in the center of the square is also a masculine symbol. The union of male and female is the perfect balance between the masculine and the feminine. In the yin-yang, we have the yin, which is female, and the yang, which is male. The cross is male and the circle is female. The cross and circle symbol is a solar cult symbol. It represents the sun. It is called the sun cross or the solar wheel. It is often considered to represent the four seasons and the tropical year. The vertical line represents north and south and is a depiction of the two solstices. The horizontal line represents east and west and represents the equinox. The Ankh is the joining of male and female, the circle being female 
and the cross at the bottom being male. The Ankh is an ancient Egyptian symbol. The cross is also a symbol for Saturn. Saturn is also considered to be a sun. Saturn is the black sun. The hexagram of Saturn. We can draw two triangles inside the hexagon, an upright triangle and an upside down triangle. This then is the six pointed star, the hexagram, and it fits inside the hexagon. In each hexagram, there is another hexagon, and we can draw another hexagram inside this hexagon. This can carry on into infinity. The many names of the hexagram. The seal of Solomon. The star of Remphan. The star of Goloka the Star of David, the Maruga, the Hex Alpha, the Sat Koda, the Double Triangle of Solomon, the Talisman of Saturn, the Anahata Chakra, the Megan David, the Tetragrammaton, the Shield of David, the Star of Creation. The Chinese call it the Earth Star. The seal of Solomon and the number 666. The Solomon seal, also called the seal of 666 or the mark of 666. The two triangles also represent the famous slogan as above, so below. Solomon. Who was King Solomon? King Solomon is the king of the sun. He is the solar sun god. Solomon is the threefold androgynous spiritual sun called the Holy Trinity, the threefold constitution of the cosmos. His name is Sol Om On. His name is actually three names, and three names that represent the same thing. They all represent the sun. Sol is the Latin word for sun. Om is the Hindi Sanskrit word for sun. On is the Egyptian word for sun. Also, Solomon represents the sun at various positions of the day from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. The word Sol implies the rising sun. It is the sun rising in the east. The word Om emphasizes the sun at the full strength of day, at midday. Om is the zenith, the full strength of the sun. On emphasizes the sunset. It is the sun going down. On is the sunset in the west. So Sol Om On is the sun rising, reaching the full strength of day, and then returning and going down at sunset. The word Sol, numerically, is the number six. The word Om, numerically, is the number six. The word On, numerically is the number six.
And so the name of Solomon is literally 666. The mark of his name is 666. The hexagram is a symbol for the name of Solomon. The temple of Solomon is the temple of the solar man. Sol Om On is the king of the universe. Everything about the hexagram points to the number 6. The hexagram has six triangles. The hexagram has six sides in the middle. The hexagram has six points or corners. It all adds up to 666. In the center, we have the cube. And therefore, the black cube is linked to and associated with Saturn. Each angle of the hexagram is 60 degrees and so there are six angles. It is 60 degrees times 60 which equals to 360 degrees. 60 is the number of the Hebrew letter Samek. Samek means the holy guardian angel. It is the solar higher self in man. Samek. So there are six holy guardian angels that surround the solar self. Six angels of 60 degrees that add up to 360 degrees. 360 is the number of the Hebrew letter Shin. Shin is the letter of the sun and its number is 666. 666 is the number of man who lives in the sun. There are six triangles that make up the hexagram. Each triangle has three sides. There is the A side, the B side and the C side. There are six A sides and six B sides and six C sides. This adds up to 666. The hexagram has six sides, three for each triangle. Each side intersects the other side at two points. Each side is evenly divided into three equal smaller parts. Each side has three equal parts. So there are three groups of six parts. There are six ones, another group of six ones, and a third group of six ones. This adds up to 666. The hexagram is also made up of three male chevrons. There are six inward pointing points and there are six outward pointing points. We will now look at the hourglass symbol. If we take two triangles and put the one triangle on top of the one at the bottom, we get the hourglass symbol. Two triangles that look like an hourglass. There are three hourglass symbols within the hexagram. Three p 
pairs of triangles that look like an hourglass. There's the red pair, the white pair and the black pair. Three pairs of triangles, the three hourglasses. They are also called the double triangles of Solomon. These double triangle shapes can be found in cave paintings that date back to the Stone Age. The double triangle is an important symbol that explains the religious beliefs of ancient people. Each triangle pair has six sides. And so once again, we have the 666. Ancient man believed in three great deities. This was called the primary trinity. Egyptian theology is centered around this primary or first trinity. Each double triangle represents a deity. So the hexagram was a symbol of the ancient trinity. The hexagram incorporates all three parts of the primary trinity. This is the ancient trinity in Egypt. The first pair of triangles represents the god Shu. Shu was the god of the air and the wind. He was also called the god of the equinox. The second pair of triangles represents the god Horus. Horus, the falcon god, was the god of the sky. He is also called the all-seeing eye. He is known as the god of the north. The third pair of triangles represents the god Set. Set is the god of war and chaos. He is also called the god of the south. Horus, Shu and Set. Another way to look at this is to draw a line which represents the horizon. We put an upside down triangle on the top and another triangle at the bottom. This is the hourglass symbol. Horus is represented by the triangle on the top. Horus is the god of the north, also called Ihu. Horus is the all-seeing eye, the eye of the falcon. At the bottom, we have Set. Set is the god of the south. Another name for Set is El Shaddai. El Shaddai is the Phoenician god. El Shaddai is the god that was claimed by Judaism. In the center we have Shu. He is also called the god of the equinox. And so we have the ancient trinity of Horus, Shu and Set. This double triangle that looks like an hourglass was also called the God of the Axe. The leader or the chief of the tribe would possess a double-headed axe. This represented the power of God. The double triangle became a symbol to represent the power of God. The chief or leader of ancient times would hold this double-headed axe. This can be considered the first scepter. Because he holds the double axe, his voice is the voice of God and must be obeyed. This is the double axe symbol. The chief stood in the place of and represented the God of the axe. The double axe symbol is also where we get the gavel from. The modern gavel that judges use in a court of law has the same shape as the double-headed axe. 
According to Freemasonry, the great architect of the universe is the one who has given us the law and it is symbolized in this double head axe symbol. The gavel is the symbol of power in a court of law and once again it is the double triangle symbol, the hourglass symbol. That is why Thor has a double-headed hammer. The double-headed hammer is a symbol of the double-headed axe. The hammer is like the gavel. He who wields the power of the double-headed axe is the one who has the power. The gavel represents the power of God. Horus is also known as the risen one in the sense that the sun rises. The double axe is the symbol of the risen one. Horus is also known as the great prince of peace. Christ is a type of Horus, Horus the sun, who rose from the dead. Now let's look at the double axe cross. If we take two double headed axes and put them at right angles, we get this cross shape. This is the ancient cross. This is where the Celtic Druids get their cross from. It is two double-headed axes placed at right angles to each other. The Knights of Malta cross comes from the two double-headed axes, the Celtic Druid Cross. All these crosses derive from the double axe, the primary trinity of the solar cult. In the olden world, at the center of the solar temples, there would be three large stone cubes. Stone worship is very ancient and predates shamanism. Stone worship is part of animism. The Druids and other solar cults practiced stone worship. They believed that the stone god resided in the stone and was considered a living entity. Each cube had the double axe inscribed on the one surface. This was the trinity of the axe gods. The double axe represents two triangles in the shape of an hourglass. The three axes numerically represent the number six Six, six. A circle with a dot in the middle was inscribed on one of the cubes, the topmost cube. This is called the circumpunct. It is one of the oldest symbols known to humans. It represents Horus and the dot in the middle is the all-seeing eye. According to Gnostics, it's the most primal aspect of God. The Greek philosophers saw the circumpunt as a symbol that represents God or the monad, the point of the beginning of creation and eternity. It is the sun of astrologers and astronomers. It is the alchemical gold of the alchemists and the keta of the Kabbalah. The three pairs of triangles together make up the hexagram. The cube has six sides. If we take three cubes 
and place them together, we form another hexagram shape. The hexagram in Egypt. The six pointed star, according to the Rosicrucian, was known to the ancient Egyptians. The six triangles is the Egyptian hieroglyph for the land of the spirits. In the astro mythology of the Egyptians, we find belief in the first man god, Horus, and his death and resurrection as Amzu. The six-pointed star was the first sign or hieroglyph of Amzu. Amzu, the risen Horus, was the first man-god risen in spirit form. The eye of Horus, the falcon. The eye represents Horus, the eternal lord of the north and the south. The upright triangle represents north. The upside down triangle represents south. The two triangles of the hexagram represent the north and the south realms governed by Horus. The great judge, unerring, just and true lord of the all seeing eye. Let us now look at the hexagram in astrology and alchemy. The hexagram can represent the elements of air, water, fire and earth. And the extra two represent light and darkness. The hexagram also represents the tripartite man the mortal trinity of spirit, body and mind. The hexagram also represents the planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, the Moon, Mercury, Mars and the seventh, the Sun in the center. Each planet represents a certain day of the week. Saturn is Saturday. Jupiter is Thursday. Venus is Friday. The Moon is Monday. Mercury is Wednesday. Mars is Tuesday and the Sun is in the center. We also see the hexagram displayed on the tree of life in the same pattern representing the planets. In alchemy we see that the various planets also represent various metals. Saturn is lead, Jupiter is tin, copper is Venus, Silver is the Moon, Mercury is Mercury, and Mars is Iron. In the center we have Gold, which represents the Sun. The hexagram is also called the Tetragrammaton, and it is the symbolic representation of the Talmudic God of the Kabbalah. Geometrically it looks like the picture on the right. If we look at the Kabbalah tree of life, right at the top, we have the crown serifoth, which is Ketha. But even above Ketha, there is another realm, which is called Ain Sof, which is directly translated as the absolute empty. 
Ein Sof is the great awareness that is above all spiritual realms. It is the vacuum of pure spirit. Ein Sof is nothingness, motionless and abstract space. Ketha, the crown sephirot, is called the Zohar, which means the most sublime. It is the most hidden of all things, incomprehensible to man. Numerically, Ein Sof adds up to 166, the absolute empty. Ketha, which means unity, adds up to the number 500. 166 plus 500 is equal to 666, the number of the sun. Let us now look at the hexagram in Hinduism. Here we have the Anahata Chakra. It is the heart chakra and it consists of the hexagram surrounded by 12 petals of the lotus flower. Hinduism originated in the Indus Valley civilization. Hinduism is one of the oldest forms of religion on earth. Many religions come from Hinduism. Judaism, although eclectic, has many Hindu traits, symbols and beliefs. The Jewish hexagram comes from Hinduism. The Jewish system of law, purity codes and diet are all based on Hinduism. Hinduism teaches us that there are two triangles. The red upright triangle is the male, which speaks of fire and represents the god Shiva. The blue upside down triangle is female and represents water. It also represents the goddess Shatki. Thus the hexagram represents the macrocosm and the pentagram the microcosm. The triangles of the hexagram symbolize the union of opposites, hence it is the symbol of the mediator. Each human being has both the masculine and the feminine aspect within him. The masculine aspect is associated with the self-consciousness, the sun, the active and the projecting. The feminine aspect includes the subconscious, the moon, the passive and the accepting. The hexagram is also a Gnostic symbol and symbolizes the divine man Adam. From his side God created Eve because Adam should not be alone and be able to enjoy the pleasure of life and love. Adam and Eve are therefore inseparable and the two poles were created so that love could be experienced on the level of man. Om in the center speaks of the harmonious union of the pairs of opposites.
Another symbol we can look at is the Sudarshana Chakra of Lord Vishnu. It is a symbol associated with Muruga, the god of war. Notice the hexagram surrounding the god. Here we see the Nataraja, the Lord of the Dance. This is the Hindu god Shiva in his form of the cosmic dancer. This symbol can be found in the Shavit temples. It is portrayed here in the ancient Shatkona, the six-pointed star or hexagram. Shiva's hands and feet are outstretched to the corners of the hexagram. The statue, symbolizing Shiva's cosmic dance of creation and destruction, was given to CERN in 2004 by the Indian government to celebrate the research center's long association with India. Shiva's dance is the cosmic dance of subatomic particles which is observed and analyzed by CERN's physicists. The atomic symbol is also hexagram shaped. The hexagram in Buddhism In Buddhism, some old versions of the Bardo Thodol, also known as the Tibetan Book of the Dead, contain a hexagram with a swastika on the inside. It is known as Shos Kia, Biyang Nas, which is interpreted as the origin of phenomenon. It is especially connected with Vajrayai Ojini, and forms the center part of her mandala. In reality, it is in three dimensions, not two, although it may be portrayed either way. The hexagram in Mesopotamia. The six-pointed star is one of the most widely used religious symbols today. More than any other symbol, the six-pointed star has had a place in all faiths, with a history going back to the ancient Sumerians, the oldest known civilization. The symbol dates back to ancient Babylon and is depicted on ancient Sumerian seals. This Akkadian seal, titled VA243, is part of a collection of cylinder seals. It dates back to the 3rd millennium BC, about 4,500 years old, and can be seen at the East Berlin Museum. It shows the god Enlil granting the plough the knowledge of agriculture to humankind. In this seal, we also see a depiction of our solar system in the top left corner, the sun in the middle with 11 planets of various sizes around the Sun. This astronomical depiction is the oldest known representation of the hexagram, the Shatkona, the Seal of Solomon. The Seal of Solomon is a term used by medieval Jews, also Islamic traditions and in the modern Western world of occultism. The hexagram in Armenia the usage of the hexagram in Armenian science, art, architecture, decorations and even for religious purposes has been extensive throughout history. The oldest known depiction of a six-pointed star dating back to the third millennium was excavated in the Ashtarak burial mound in Nurkan Navar in Armenia. Armenian architecture is often geometrically sound 
with straight lines connecting columns and mathematical precision. Among many symbols, Armenians used the six-pointed star for architectural purposes. Early Armenians believed the hexagram had magical powers and incorporated it in architecture, astronomy and sacred art. Attesting to that, there are numerous Armenian churches constructed in the shape of a six-pointed star. They also used hexagrams to support the dome or simply as sacred decoration, protecting the church like magic charms. The hexagon floor plan of a medieval Armenian church, the Church of the Shepherd. The dome of Korah Kurt Monastery, 12th century AD, Armenia. The hexagram in occultism. For centuries, the six pointed star had been used in every major religion as well as in witchcraft and occultism. The hexagram in Theosophy Here we see the emblem of the 19th century Theosophical Society. In the center we see the two interlaced triangles one light and one dark. These triangles represent the descent of spirit into matter. The interlaced triangles, one lighter point upwards and the other darker pointing downwards, symbolize the descent of spirit into matter and its re-emergence from the confining limits of form. These two triangles also suggest the constant conflict between the light and dark forces in nature. As well as the inseparable unity of spirit and matter, the three lines and three angles of each of the two triangles may remind us of the triple aspects of spirit, existence, consciousness, and bliss and the three aspects of matter mobility resistance and rhythm the glyph can also be seen as the six-pointed star embracing spiritual and physical consciousness and viewed by the Pythagoreans as the symbol of creation When depicted with the serpent circle, it represents the universe and the manifestation of deity in time and space. The hexagram in Freemasonry. This painting was done by Urizen and is entitled The Ancient of Days. It represents the great architect of the universe holding a compass. The seal of Saturn. Here we see the hexagram in the seal of Saturn. The famous Freemason sign of the square and the compass also represent the seal of Solomon. Though its esoteric meaning remains hidden to most Christians and to the majority of Jewish people, it is well known by those in the occult and the New Age movement. The six-pointed star is manifestly seen and its true meaning revealed during the highest levels of secret initiations within Freemasonry.
The compass is an instrument that draws circles. A circle represents the feminine. A square is used to draw squares. A square represents the masculine. Here we see the hexagram on the wall, the temple of the Lodge of Edinburgh in Scotland. At the center, we see a fiery G, which speaks of the radiant power of the great architect, God himself. The Universal Hexagram and Therima. Alistair Crowley and the Solomon Sigil, speaking of chaos magic. Thelema is an occult social or spiritual philosophy developed in the early 1900s by Alistair Crowley, an English writer, mystic and ceremonial magician. The most important symbol in Thelema is the universal hexagram. The doctrine of Thelema is do what thou wilt. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. For Crowley refers not to hedonism, fulfilling everyday desires, but to acting in response to that calling. The Thelemite is a mystic, the spiritual quest to find what you are meant to do and do it. It is also known in Thelema as the great work. Notice the hexagram with the all-seeing eye on the headdress of Alistair Crowley. The hexagram is depicted with a five-petaled flower in the center which symbolizes a pentacle or a pentagram. The symbol itself is the equivalent of the Egyptian Ankh or the Rosicrucian Rosy Cross which represents the microcosmic forces. The pentacle representation of the pentagram with five elements the pentagrammaton or Yeshua interweave with the macrocosmic forces, the hexagram, the representation of the planetary or heavenly cosmic forces, the divine. The hexagram and the Baphomet Eliphas Levi, a 19th century French occultist, created the famous Baphomet, displayed in his book Dogmas and Rituals of High Magic and Eclectic Work, influenced by Hermitism, Kabbalism, Alchemy and Catholicism. Eliphas Levi's depiction of the pentagram is inundated with various Kabbalistic symbols. Levi stood for a specific secret tradition that formed the key to the understanding of the true form of religion. The goat of black magic. The Baphomet head is based on the Mendes cult in Egypt. The goat of Mendes, the sabbatical goat, was a temple goat utilized in an ancient cult in the city of Mendes, Egypt. Supposedly, the goat copulated bestiality 
with priestesses in certain religious ceremonies. The choice of a goat-like features for Baphomet comes from several connections between goats and fertility. Levi himself called the figure Baphomet of Mendes, comparing him to a what he believed was a goat-headed Egyptian god honored for fertility purposes. Pan, a Greek god with goat features, was likewise commonly associated with fertility in the 19th century. The Baphomet is one of the most famous esoteric images ever created. The Baphomet is pantheistic and a magical figure of the Absolute. Levi identified it with Pan. In ancient Greek religion and mythology, Pan is the god of the wild, shepherds and flocks, nature of mountain wilds, rustic music and impromptus, and companion of the nymphs. He has the hindquarters, legs and horns of a goat, in the same manner as a fawn or satire. One of the most striking aspects of the Baphomet is its androgynous form. He regarded the emancipation of women as a prerequisite for the progress of society, a widespread notion in socialist circles. But she was also the one who in the personification of Mary redeemed humanity by her Christ-like suffering and would eventually rehabilitate Lucifer heralding the final universal synthesis. This synthesis would bring forth a union not only of humanity and God, but also of man and woman. The two sexes will be one according to the word of Christ. The great androgyny will be created. Humanity will be woman and man. The Baphomet is in several ways an embodiment of the astral light. Astral light is the force behind magnetism and consequently the ultimate cause of magical operations. The monstrous figure of the Baphomet is an embodiment of many aspects, the final synthesis of science, religion, philosophy and politics, which would be realized through the progressive decryption of the tradition of true religion and the creation of the kingdom of God on earth. Levi heralded the establishment of the final universal religion on earth in an enthusiastic socialist tenor, the association of all interests, the federation of all people, the alliance of all cults and universal solidarity. The image depicts a number of fundamental occultist principles. The pentagram. The five points of the pentagram represent the four elements of matter, as well as the fifth element of spirit. The fifth element is of the spirit and not of this world. It is from above. When the pentagram is turned upside down, it is placing the spirit in a derogatory position. For the elements to be in balance, the fifth element of spirit must be positioned in its rightful place atop the pentagram. Baphomet also represents the unity of the four platonic elements, earth, water, air and fire. Air and water are the easiest to identify through the fish scale, water, and the symbolic semicircle of the atmosphere, air. Baphomet's feet are planted on the sphere of the earth, while a fire burns from his crown. The sign of hermetism, the right hand pointing up to the white moon of Chesed, the left hand pointing down to the black moon of Geburah. 
This sign expresses the perfect harmony of mercy and justice. Kuhunrath. His one arm is female, the other male-like, the ones of the androgen of Kuhunrath, the attributes of which is united with those of the goat because he is one and the same symbol. Alchemy. The Latin terms solve and coagulate written upon Baphomet's arms. These translate to dissolve and coagulate, which are opposing alchemical processes. The astral light. The flame of intelligence shining between his horns is the magic light of the universal balance, the image of the soul elevated above matter as the flame, whilst being tied to matter shines above it. The goat head. The beast's head expresses the horror of the sinner whose materially acting, solely responsible part has to bear the punishment exclusively because the soul is insensitive according to its own nature and can only suffer when it materializes. The breast. Humanity is represented by the two breasts and the adrongian arms of the sphinx of the occult sciences. Levi described Baphomet as the sphinx of the occult sciences. A sphinx is most commonly a creature with the body of a lion and the head of a human. They originated in Egypt where they were probably connected with guardianship among other things. By Levi's time, the Freemasons were also using sphinxes as symbols of guardians of secret and mysteries. The Phallus The rod standing instead of genitals symbolizes eternal life, the body covered with scales, the water, the semicircle above it the atmosphere, the feathers following above the volatile, the caduceus. The caduceus-like image replacing the phallus in which the two snakes frequently represent male and female. In modern times we find the star of life which is a medical symbol. Notice the hexagram in the star of life. Superimposing the pentagram on the Baphomet's head was done by the critics of Levi. Notice the upside down pentagram which is a sign of bad luck. The elements are out of balance with the spirit. The pentagram is the right size up in Levi's image. Whether Levi intended the hexagram to be superimposed over the Baphomet's head is unknown. The Hexagram in Christianity In recent years the symbol has become a centerpiece in many Christian churches and gatherings and has become the unifying symbol of all faiths. The Basila of Santa Croce the Basilica of the Holy Cross is a Franciscan church in Florence, Tuscany. Here it boasts the Star of David in the bell tower built in 1842. The hexagram can also be seen on the bishop's mitre. The Pope's mitre also has the hexagram. Here we see a stained glass window called Jesus in Glory, surrounded by four angels, in the Basil Minster Cathedral. It is the rose window with the Star of David. Here we see the Star of David in the Crucivo Macedonia St. Nicola a Christian Orthodox Church.
the hexagram in Islam. The name of Allah is written inside a hexagram. This is to be found in the mosque of Makadum Sabzwari in Mayfair Garden near House Kaus, New Delhi. The hexagram in Islam. Here we see the Kaaba, translated as the Black Cube. It is the most holy place in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Muslims walk, called the Tawaf, anti-clockwise around the Kaaba to mimic the solar system. Planets revolve anti-clockwise around the sun. All religions come from an ancient stellar cult. Before man worshipped deities, they worshipped the stars and planets. The Kaaba is a symbol of Saturn worship. The Kaaba, like the Moses Tabernacle, both are cubed shaped. The Holy of Holies is a perfect cube. So the Kaaba is a perfect cube. The hexagram in UFO cults. Rayalism. Rayalism is a French UFO cult founded in 1970 by Claude Vorilon. He believed in an ET race known as Elohim. Elohim created humanity. This symbol is a merging of the swastika and the hexagram. On the 13th of December 1973, French journalist Rayul was taking a hike in the mountains and claims he was contacted by a visitor from another planet and asked to establish an embassy to welcome those aliens back to Earth. The UFO which landed bore the following symbol. The close encounter Rayul had was with a UFO that bore the hexagram symbol. Rael is two names, Ra, the Egyptian sun god, and El, the god of Saturn, Rael. Here is a quote from Rael. Rael is calling for a new world order. In a world where order is chaos, where wise men are viewed as fools, and where fools are ruling the world, and viewed as wise men, there is a need to create a real new world order. A new world order where the mental confusion will disappear, where peace and love will prevail and where the human rights will be really fully respected. Here is a quote from Alice Bailey. Only in the final root race of men upon our planet will the essential central triangle make its appearance and function openly known in the third planetary center of humanity. One point of this future triangle will emerge out of the field of world governments, another out of the world religions, and a third out of the field of world economics. The leaders of these three fields will attempt the experiment of centralization. At the close of the age, 
these three fields will be unified and synchronized. They will form symbolically a star with nine points in continual revolution. The energies of these three fields will manifest in the expression of life in all the kingdoms of nature. Alice Bailey The hexagram in the USA. On the American seal, above the eagle's head, we find 13 stars. These stars have been positioned in the form of the hexagram. 13 stars, 12 make up the star of David. This can also be seen on the American dollar bill. Mason, as in Freemason. The hexagram and the number nine. Numbers are not man-made symbols, but are actually real. Numbers are alive. Nine is the number of the earth under the influence of Saturn. The number nine is the last of the cardinal numbers, the root numbers and therefore has the highest vibrational frequency. 11, 22 and 33 are master numbers. 9 is like a master number. 9 is a magical number. The number 9 speaks of wholeness and completion. Nine is the number of magic. Nine is a sacred number. Nine is the number of completion and fulfillment. Nine is a symbol of wisdom and good leadership. Nine is the number of heaven. Nine is the number of creative energy. Nine is the number of the Inid gods. Nine is the end of one cycle and the beginning of another. 2019 is the end of a dispensation. Nine separates. 2019 from 2020. 2020 is the beginning of a new dispensation. 2019 is the end of an old cycle and 2020 is the beginning of a new cycle, the dawn of a new day. Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla said, if you only knew the magnificence of the three, six and nine, then you would have a key to the universe. In mathematics, nine simultaneously is the singularity and the vacuum. Nine is both linear duality and outward divergence. Nikola Tesla was an inventor that among other groundbreaking discoveries 
discovered alternating current in electricity. Many of his discoveries are not in the public mainstream, but are kept hidden by the elite. Tesla discovered wireless power, toroidal vortex energy, and was working on teleportation before he died. Some say he even achieved it. The Tesla diagram is a numerical conceptualization of reality. The number 9 at the top of the diagram is considered the mathematical fingerprint of God. The white lines in the Tesla diagram represent the flow of magnetic energy. The red lines represent electric energy. Three, nine and six is in red and does not connect at the base. That is because it is a vector. The one, two, four, eight, seven and five is the third dimension. While the oscillation between three and six with nine at the top demonstrates the fourth dimension, which is the higher dimensional magnetic field of an electric coil. There is more to numbers than the mere quantities we assign them. Numbers are alive. They structure our waking reality. All the great mystics and philosophers throughout the ages understood this numeric universe. It won't be long until we are able to manufacture energy and reshape our world the way nature intended, through implosion rather than explosion. The principles of vortex math and the underlying ideologies of this forgotten science are resurfacing. This lost numerical art is a portal to understanding the nature of reality and the psychological implications gained from such introspection are paramount to the evolution of the world's soul. The hexagram is a geometrical representation of the number 6. 6 is a magical number. 3, 6 and 9 as spiritual energy. The 3, 6 and 9 represent the pathways that force, i.e. energy information, manifest through to form material. The other numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 7 and 8 represent the already manifested ingredients of material. Thus the structure of all things material is dependent on the sequence pattern that force takes via 3, 6 and 9 conduits. The sequence changes to form the pulses. Force found forming and supporting all things, commonly known as fields i.e. vibration. Everything is vibration. The only numbers that are real in the universe are 3, 6 and 9. Everything else is an illusion. We live in the matrix of illusion. 3, 6 and 9 are the only real forces that transcend the matrix of illusion. The other numbers, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7 and 8, are part of the matrix. So everything begins with energy. In the beginning, there was massless energy. Energy is then transformed or formed into matter through the conduits of 3, 6 and 9. When massless energy takes on mass, it becomes matter. 
the molecular universe in which we live. Another way of saying it is that energy through the conduit of spirit creates matter. Energy is converted into matter. The spiritual forces of 3, 6 and 9 is what brings matter into existence. Consciousness, another word for spirit, another word for energy, creates reality. Consciousness creates reality. Is an amplification of three and nine is the completion of all things three six and nine three represents growth the beginning six represents stability nine represents completion three is the beginning three is the child when the child grows up it becomes six the adult when the adult procreates, it becomes nine, the parent. The hexagram represents the number 666. If we take 6 plus 6 plus 6, it equals to 18. In Geomatra, numerology we always work with one number so if we have a two digit number we add the two digits together to make one number so 18 is 1 plus 8 therefore it equals 9 666 equals 9 9 in the yin yang the yin yang is not a two-part but actually a three-part on the yang side we have three on the yin side we have six three and six speak of effect in the middle we have the s shape that separates the yin from the yang this s shape is the number nine it is divine energy, also known as Tao, and this is the cause. And so we have cause and effect. Three and six represent each side of the yin yang, and the nine is the S curve between them. The universe is not static, but in a state of perpetual motion. Everything is moving, revolving, the flow of energy is from the spiritual nine into the matter of physicality and then returning back to the spirit. We live in a three-part universe, not a two-part. The two-part is the yin and the yang. The third part which makes everything possible is spirit and therefore physicality can only work if there is spirit. Everything in the universe is based on thirds, three parts. The yin-yang symbol is not representing a duality, 
but rather a trinary. The nine is divine energy, the Tao. We think the universe is based on dualities because we see only the effects, not the cause, which is divine, i.e. the number nine. The power of nine is source energy. The orgasmic energy is the spiritual dimension of physical intimacy. When male and female come together, it creates source energy. Source energy is the explosion of orgasmic energy represented by the number nine. Orgasmic energy is the spiritual dimension of physical intimacy. The nine gods of Egypt, three sets of three trinities, is a great carnal power. The number nine also refers to the council of the gods, a collective term for all gods. There are nine primary gods of Egypt. The Greeks also had a pantheon of nine gods. The Enid was nine gods that represented the archetypal principles that regulated and ruled the cosmos through laws of numbers. In our movies, we see the number nine. In the Lord of the Rings, there were nine guardians of the ring. They were seen as and called the Fellowship of the Nine. There were also nine horsemen of Sauron. They were the servants of Sauron, the nine servants of Sauron. Sauron sounds like Saturn. They serve the god of Saturn. The movie The Ninth Gate came out in 1999, played by Johnny Depp. This movie is about the number nine. The Ninth Gate is about achieving transcendence and entering the Ninth Gate, which is the highest portal man can enter to reach heaven. In Christianity, we see the nine gifts of the Spirit. The nine seraphim. In the angiology hierarchy, the seraphim are of the highest order and they are on level nine. There are nine levels of angels, the nine choirs of angels. The seraphim are on level nine. Seraphim in Hebrew means the burning ones, and they are the attendants of the throne of God. They praise God, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. They are on level nine. Below them are the cherubim, then thrones then dominions number six virtues number five powers on level four we then drop down to principalities on level three then archangels and at the bottom angels cloud nine is the highest cloud I am on cloud nine. In ufology, we have the council of nine. There is a great federation of alien species called the council of nine. They are the guardians of the universe. The council of nine are nine entities who have been operating on earth for at least 25,000 years. They are considered to be an alien presence, but perhaps not in the extraterrestrial sense. Their identities are not acknowledged by the modern world, which is under the advent of Christianity. The nine correspond to the nine, also Egypt's great Enid, as well as Hellenistic Zeus of the Council of Nine. The nine were paganized during the Christianization of the modern world. A cat has nine lives. 
A stitch in time says nine. The nine of nine eleven. Eleven is the great magical number. Eleven is the magical force itself. And together with nine, the most evil of numbers yields nine eleven. Evil magic. Remember, numbers are not evil, but the way people use them. Numbers can be used for good or evil. In the 9-11 case, 9 was used as an evil number. On the 11th of September 2001, Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower at 8.46 a.m. If you take 8.46 and add it together, it is 8 plus 4 plus 6, which equals 18. If we add the 1 and the 8 together, it comes to 9. On the 25th of May 2020, George Floyd, a black man, was killed by a police officer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The officer killed Floyd by placing his knee on Floyd's neck, causing him not to breathe. It took 8 minutes and 46 seconds for Floyd to die. If you add 8 plus 4 plus 6 together, it comes to 18. If you add the 1 and the 8 together, it comes to 9. This is how 9 is used in an evil way. www.truthseekers.jobo